are you financially struggling? Are you struggling to make ends meet, create wealth, or get out of poverty? When this question is asked to many people, the answer is yes. If you are one of those people who are still struggling, this session is for you. We are going to look at some of the causes of your struggles and what you can do so that you can stop struggling, earn enough money, pay your bills, save and invest. And in the process, you are going to create wealth. It is important for you to note that for purposes of this session, when we refer to the term poverty or poor, we are referring to a situation where a person or a business is unable to meet its financial needs or financial obligations. That is the session definition of the two terms. When one is unable to meet their financial needs, irrespective of the size of their business or their social status, they are in a poverty situation. If you look at your financial situation, how happy are you with where you are? You need to hear this. It is a fact that today money is used for everything. Everything that you want to do, you need money. For example, if you want to pay your bills, you need money. If you want to buy food, you need money. If you want to save, you need money. If you want to invest, you need money. And if you want to donate, you need money. Therefore, money is at the heart of every activity that we undertake today. Today, every person desires to be in a situation where they are able to take care of all their financial needs. This desire is when they are still working and even after retirement. After one goes into retirement, they hate relying on others. Everybody would want a situation where they rely on their own financial investments. No one wants to be dependent on others. When people are working and also in retirement, they require financial stability. And if you are struggling while you are still working, it is very difficult to be financially stable when you retire. Many business people struggle to create wealth. Many business people, including taxpayers, struggle to meet their financial needs, create wealth, or even get out of poverty. And this is during their working life and also after retirement. And this is the main problem when we are talking about struggles and poverty as far as business people are concerned. And one of the worst things about this struggle is that you can find yourself in a situation where you are going to work very hard, pay taxes, but at the end of the day, you are not going to have anything. You are going to continue struggling when you are working, and that is when you are working in your business, and you are also going to struggle after retirement. Today, when you look at most people who have retired, they are struggling to make ends meet. Yet, these are people who paid taxes when they were working. And this is irrespective of whether they were working their own businesses or they were employed. Today, many businesses are struggling, not even able to pay their taxes. And if they are not even able to pay their taxes, that can tell you one thing. They are also not able to pay for their bills. If one is struggling to pay their taxes and pay their bills, are they going to have any money to save or even invest? The answer is no. And this tells you that they cannot even be able to create wealth. And if they are not able to create wealth, this means that they are going to remain in poverty. And if they were not in poverty, they are going to slide into poverty. If you look at the demographic today, many people who are not poor before, because of the current situation that we are going through, many people have become poor. The poverty levels have increased. If you are struggling, there are many reasons for this. But do you know the reasons? 
this may surprise you. The main reason why many taxpayers live in poverty and struggle to create wealth is their money habits. Yes, their money habits. In this video, we are going to examine 12 money habits that may be pushing you as a business person or as a taxpayer into poverty. It is important to note that these are not the only habits. There are very many others out there. But for purposes of this session, we are going to discuss or examine only 12 money habits. When you become aware of your money habits, you can improve your money management, savings, investments, create wealth, and break the cycle of poverty. What are the money habits keeping you poor? Number 12 will surprise you. Money habit number one, not paying yourself. When is the last time you paid yourself? I know someone is asking, pay myself? Yes, if others pay you, you should also pay yourself. And if you paid yourself, how much did you pay yourself? Do you think that pay is enough or is adequate? And where did you put the money? Why I'm asking this question is because many of us do not think it is necessary or are not aware that we should be paying ourselves. After you have paid your salary, you should pay yourself. And you do this even before you pay others. You can set aside a certain amount, a certain percentage, maybe 10% or 20%, and that is going to be your pay. If you pay 30% for income tax, why don't you pay yourself? Does it mean that you hate yourself so much and you love the government so much that you can pay the government 30% of what you earn, but you do not pay yourself? Paying bills does not mean that you have paid yourself. When you pay bills, you pay other people. But how about yourself? You are the one who earns the money. Do you pay yourself? If you don't, start paying yourself. I do understand that somebody out there is saying, after I pay all my bills, nothing is left. That is very good information. Because you need to ask yourself, if you don't even have money to pay yourself, and you are the one who earns the money to pay others. What is the problem? You need to ask yourself what you can do so that after you pay yourself, the money that is left is enough to pay the taxes and also pay for your bills. Not paying yourself can limit your ability to save money and invest for your future. This can affect your ability to get or escape poverty. Habit number two, you don't make enough money. We need money to do very many things and the money that we earn is distributed into various activities. Let us call those activities baskets. And this would mean that on the minimum, the money that we earn should be distributed into five baskets. The first basket is paying yourself. The second basket should be paying taxes. I understand that before we get our pay, taxes have already been deducted. And this would mean that the second basket is paying ourselves, but the first basket would be paying taxes. The third basket is for bills. And these are household bills or business bills. The fourth basket is about emergency funds. We have been told time and time again, it is important for us to set aside a certain amount of money as emergency funds. But almost everyone complains that they don't earn enough money and that is why they do not set aside emergency money. Have you ever imagined that probably one day, God forbid, you are not going to be able to work? And that can happen because of many things. You can lose your job. If you lose your job or your business goes down, what are you going to rely on? 
it is important for you to set aside a certain amount of money as emergency money. The fifth basket should have money to save and invest. The money that you set aside to pay yourself, that is your personal money. You can use it anytime that you want, but the money to save and invest is different. That money, in most cases, you cannot get it when you want. For example, if you buy a piece of land as an investment, you, you cannot be able to sell it anytime that you want. Are you struggling to pay your basic expenses? If yes, this may be an indication that you do not make enough money. Of course, many people do not, but that should not be an excuse. When you don't make enough money to cover your basic expenses, you will not have any money to save or invest. You may end up relying on loans, and this is going to increase your debt. You will pay higher interest, and you are not going to have any financial flexibility or stability. This can hinder your potential growth and result in poverty. Habit number three, no emergency savings. How much emergency savings do you have at this moment? Let me ask you, if you find yourself in a situation where you are unable to work for the next six months, what are you going to do if you do not have emergency savings? Every person needs or requires a certain level of stability. Emergency savings will give us that stability. We have been advised time and time again about the need to have emergency savings, at least to cater for our living expenses, to caution us for a period of between three and six months. We all need that safety net from any unforeseen events. For example, medical expenses or job losses. Without that safety net, we may have to spend all our savings or get into debt to cover the expenses. This may put us further into financial crisis, debt accumulation, and poverty. Habit number four, debt comfort. Let me ask you two questions. Question number one, how much debt do you have? Personal debt and business debt. Question number two, when did you last take debt? Every taxpayer or an individual will take debt. And please remember, business people and individuals are taxpayers. And every time when we talk about taxpayers, we are talking about natural persons and legal persons. Everybody is a taxpayer. We have been told time and time again that debt is good. We have also been told that debt is not good. When you get used to taking debt, you become comfortable with debt. And that is not a good habit. Being comfortable with debt may result in debt accumulation and dependency. You are going to have a lot of debts and you are going to rely on debt for anything that you do financially. Every time when you become reliant on debt, that is not very good because it is going to push you further into poverty. Remember, you can only be able to access debt for a very short time. We are not saying that you should not take debt. What we are saying is, when you take debt, you should be able to create cash flows so that tomorrow you are not going to rely on debt. Don't be like the people who take unnecessary debt. You want to buy a new pair of shoes, you go to the bank and get debt. You want to buy clothing, you go to the bank and take debt. You want to buy a nice car, you go to the bank and take debt. Of course, you can buy a nice car, 
if it is a marketing car, if it is a vehicle that is going to help you generate income. But anything that does not help you, we classify that as bad debt. You should not be reliant on bad debt. And you know debt is very addictive. And debt has taken many people down. And especially if you are addicted to debt. In case you are struggling financially, it is important to check whether you have debt comfort. As we have said, this may be one of the reasons why you are struggling. Habit number five, tax compliance. Have you ever paid extra taxes as fines, penalties, or interest? If you have, this is an indication of poor money habits. Tax compliance can help you improve your money habits. When taxes are mishandled, this can result in debts to pay tax fines, penalties, and interest. Of course, this is going to affect your finances. You may find yourself accumulating debt and you will have little to save or invest. Remember, when you are not tax compliant, you are breaking the tax laws. The financial burden of taxes may eventually result in financial difficulties and poverty. Habit number six, financial plan. Let me ask you three questions. Question number one, do you have a financial plan? Question number two, are you monitoring the financial plan? And question number three, when is the last time you used your financial plan? Time and time again, we have been told that failure to plan is planning to fail. If you do not have a financial plan, you are likely going to neglect very important activities. And this is going to result in mismanagement of your finances. Your ability to make money is going to be limited. And as a result, you risk becoming poor. The lack of a financial plan indicates that some critical financial issues are not prioritized. If this is the case, what is likely to happen? You will likely miss opportunities for savings, investment, and wealth building. A financial plan is very important. Always remember that. For example, with a financial plan and good money management, you can make all your payments on time. Avoid incurring late payment charges and maximize the use of the resources that you have. Lack of a financial plan may be pushing you into poverty. Habit number seven, investing habits. If I may ask you, how much investments do you have? And how often do you invest? Investments are very important because they give us cash flows. It's a very sad situation that many individuals, whether in business or employees, do not have investments. And what is the reason for the lack of investments? It's because they either do not have investing habits or they have very poor investing habits. How much investments do you have? Can you tell upfront? If you put off or postpone investing, your capacity to accumulate wealth and escape poverty may be impaired. In cases where you postpone your investments, this means that you are not going to enjoy cash flows. And if you do not have cash flow, you are going to be in a lot of trouble. Most of the businesses that are not able to cater for all their expenses is because their cash flow is very poor. So investment is one of the steps that you can take to improve your cash flow. For example, 
in case you have extra cash instead of leaving it in a current account you can put it in a fixed account and use it that is going to give you interest income if you don't take advantage of many investment opportunities that are there you risk missing out on the benefits of wealth creation growth and long term financial rewards at the end of the day you will have constrained financial growth lack of financial diversity and increased financial risk all this could result in poverty habit number 8 no savings habit how much savings do you have in your bank account today if you have been ignoring steps to save all not giving savings the attention it deserves you may have missed many investment opportunities to accumulate wealth if you rely on your savings and ignore inflation your long term financial goals or objectives are not likely to be met for example if you save $500 the value of your savings may likely remain the same no matter how many years you are going to save and this is purely because of inflation the interest that you are going to be paid may be less than the inflation effect on the 500 US dollars savings alone cannot get you out of poverty you must get into the habit of saving and investing at the same time poor saving habits may keep you from building wealth and accomplishing your financial goals this could be causing you to fall into poverty habit number 9 friends yes we all have them friends but who are your friends your closest friends who are your five closest friends always remember that friends in friends are lives basically in two ways friends can drive you into poverty and friends can help you get out of poverty having friends who engage in excessive spending and maintaining a lifestyle way above your means can lead to financial stress impulsive spending habits and debt accumulation if you try to keep up with those friends you will spend all your money and most likely pay little attention to your savings and investments at the end of the day you may find yourself getting further into debt and this could lead to financial instability and poverty habit number 10 risk financial behavior are you a risk taker how much risk can you take risk financial behavior can result in significant losses and debt most people take risk and they do not know the likely outcomes some examples of risk financial behavior are excessive borrowings gambling and speculative investments engaging in such activities without good risk management and self discipline might lack your finances and push you further into debt habit number 11 earning capacity what is your earning capacity or potential you may be underestimating your capacity to earn but this is the question when did you last take steps to increase your earning capacity for example when did you last go back to school or when did you learn a new skill in today's world you are not competing with only those around you your competition is global if your earning capacity is low it may be difficult for you to earn more save invest and build wealth 
this could be putting you further into poverty. Finally, habit number 12. The supplies. Habit number 12 is cycle of poverty. We all come from families and communities. Could you be suffering from a cycle of family or community poverty? This is because being caught up in a cycle of poverty within a family or community level had made it extremely difficult to get money and less likely to use the many opportunities available for creating wealth. You are used to a certain lithium, lithium of poverty. Growing up in poverty or in an area with limited economic opportunities may present long-term financial obstacles. And it becomes a cycle. Trying to break the family or community cycle of poverty and accumulate wealth may be difficult if you are in a cycle of poverty. The family or community cycle of poverty will push you further into poverty. Number 12 was the last money habit. So far, we have discussed 12 money habits. Habit number one was not paying yourself. Habit number two was you don't earn enough money. Habit number three was about emergency savings. Habit number four was about debt comfort. Habit number five was about tax compliance, while habit number six was about financial plan. Habit number seven was about investment habits. Habit number eight was about saving habits. Habit number nine was about brands, while habit number 10 was about risky financial behavior. Habit number 11 was about earning capacity, while the last habit, that is habit number 12, was about cycle of poverty. Those are the 12 money habits that may be keeping you poor, and this may be the reason why you are struggling to make ends meet, create wealth, and get out of poverty. Before we started, I had asked you to prepare a list of at least 20 money habits that you think may be keeping you poor. Go through your list and also what we have discussed and compare your list with our list. You can always combine the two lists so that you can have one comprehensive list. We have gone through this session and when you go through a session, whether it's a business session or whatever else that you're going through, it is important to pick key points. And the key points are the ones that should guide you. What are the key points that we can pick from this session? Point number one. Many people struggle to invest and create wealth. And the reason is because they are struggling financially. Point number two, money habits are the main cause of the struggles. We have discussed 12 money habits. Point number three, one should take collective actions when they are still working and also in retirement. In this session, we have discussed about financial struggles. Almost everyone is struggling financially. And we have discussed the main reason as our money habits. And we have looked at 12 money habits that may be contributing to these struggles. Now that we know about the money habits, it is not enough to listen to the discussion. You need to take action. Otherwise, you will have wasted your time. So what is the way forward? This is what we suggest. Number one, go through the session as many times as you're comfortable. Number two, identify the money habits that affect you. We are all different. What is affecting you is not what is affecting me. And once you do that, the battle is half won. 
Number three, take collective actions or measures. If you do that, you will have moved several steps in resolving the issues that are affecting your financial capability. We have come to the end of this session and we have been discussing 12 money habits keeping you poor. This is one of the topics we discuss in our business program to help small and medium-sized businesses grow their business, pay tax, save and invest. Before you leave, I want you to do two things. Go to the comment section and leave us a message about any other money habit that may be contributing to our financial struggles. Number two, I want you to subscribe to this channel. And this is the reason. Whatever content is in this channel is for free. Ordinarily, if you consult us, we would charge you for it. But we want you to grow. That is why we are providing this free content so that you can be able to grow your business, pay taxes, save and invest. We have prepared a PDF document for this session. In case you would also want to read, you can go ahead and access the document. The link is in the description. This is Dr. Wakaguyu, WK.